Stranger Friends, time is running out. Tomorrow, Saturday, February 13th at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we are not celebrating Melissa's 44th birthday with a Zoom party. So if you have not yet gotten your ticket to the party, do it because ticket sales close at 11.59 p.m. tonight. Yes, that's Eastern Standard Time. You can drop $20 to Venmo at Imperfect Strangers Podcast or PayPal bs.strangers at gmail.com. Your ticket purchase will get you digital downloads. It will get you your very own bingo card because yes, we are playing Imperfect Strangers Bingo. One lucky winner of our first bingo game gets to have their very own cousins recording session to create their very own episode of Imperfect Strangers podcast. So without further ado, go buy your fucking tickets and enjoy the show. All right. So before we jump into this, I have questions. So I don't know if you want me to save my questions for before or after, but I I have questions. Okay. Are your questions rooted in nervousness about the test? (laughs) (laughs) My questions are, um, I didn't realize that this was like a thing. Because by and large, white people, um, when when white people talk about culture or heritage or, you know, what have you, um, you know, some people are very proud of their, um, their, what I want to say, their, their culture. So like, if you're Italian, you might, um, you might, I don't know. Do you, know, you know what I mean? Like, people have their things. Like, you might get, like, a tattoo of, like, your flag or eat special foods or what have you. Right. But there's really not this um, sense of duality in white culture. And I, I know, and I think I've heard you say this before, whether it was on the real world or somewhere else, talking about I was never, you know, Asian enough for the Asian kids and I was never black enough for the black kids and this feeling of like where do I belong so I was just curious is this a thing and is this a thing that's like heavily discussed among biracial people or is this like a very personal thing is this something that I'm just not aware of because I'm white yes Okay, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Um, all mixed race, biracial, multiracial, interracial, all mixed race people go through a phase in their life where they are searching for identity. Mm-hmm. You have to remember that I was 22 years old on that show, um, fresh out of college, having a minored in black studies. Mm -hmm. Having had, you know, Shorty as my father all of my life, so there was no confusion as to what I was. (laughs) (laughs) And having Mercy as my mother, and she's, like, traditionally Filipino. So it's not like I had an Americanized Asian mom. I had a Filipino mom. I'm talking about squatting in the living room, playing solitaire with a deck of cards, Filipino-ass mom. (laughs) So, um... When biracial people, or you see biracial people, talk about identity or, you know, quote-unquote crises on television, because, you know, the visibility is high now. It wasn't that high back then. We're talking about 20 years ago. It was not that high. I can guarantee you there are people listening to this right now that are like, Melissa is the first biracial person that I saw as a biracial person. And wow, oh my God, she was saying the things that I feel. She was, you know, articulating this fucking otherness that nobody, 
I didn't have anybody to talk to about. Yeah. Even though most biracial people, you know, have siblings, cousins who are also biracial. So when you say, is it a thing? It's just a quality of being. It's just who we are. So let me, let me, I was trying to think of an analogy because I was like, you know, what's crazy is, um, when white people are um, approached with discussion of race, even non-confrontationally, I'm talking about just casual conversation, there's this automatic, like, chest-clenching, oh, fuck, I don't want to say the wrong thing. Yeah. When, in reality, as a biracial person, you know, I fucking love talking about race, racism, identity, um, confusion, uh, whatever it is, I love talking about it because it is endlessly fascinating. Mm-hmm. So, you know, when people are like, why got to be about race? Well, the reality of the situation is literally everything can be boiled down to having an element of race being part of it. But for white people, that's just not a thing because you don't wake up and wake up and go, wow, I'm just like really white today. Like that doesn't, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That, those feelings usually only happen when we're, like, dancing. Wow, God, I'm so white. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you whites love to dance on that TikTok. Um, <laughs> um, and also, I think that I don't know what white culture is. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't. So when you say, is this a thing? On the flip side, I don't know what white culture is. You know what I'm saying? Like, girl, I don't even know what white culture is. It's depressing. Right. And so then it leads you to ask the question, is there one? It's or like is whiteness just thin lips and pancake butts? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I think <laughs> I think that white culture, it kind of boils down to then like what's your heritage? Where did your grandparents or, you know, but even still like Chris's both of Chris's parents had uh, parents who were immigrants, um, like first generation. Uh, and and it's not like he grew up with some kind of like, I mean, his, his mother's parents came from Russia. It's not like he has some like Russian pride or, you know, asserts himself as being part Russian um, so right. And that's it, because of the power of American whiteness. Yeah. It's just the thing that's on top. You ride with it. It's a privilege you have unearned. It just is what it is. It's not a bad thing. You're just a white person. So like usually, especially now when you see, you know, girls on Instagram trying to create an ethnicity when they're just white, when they'll be like, you know, I didn't appreciate when you just called me a white girl. I'm German, French, Russian, you know, uh, Lebanese. Okay, bitch, (laughs) you're white, (laughs) but okay. And, And that comes from this feeling of being left out while these other people that are mixed race and from all have all these other ethnicities and nationalities, they get to have pride in that. But at the end of the day, you just get to be white and there's no like oppressive layer in there so it makes the people who are non-white go okay i don't get it what do you i'm supposed to care that you're half german and half italian okay like (laughs) but i mean that's what it sounds like to a non-white person when a white person starts adding all their little layers of mayonnaise we're like cool nice interesting yeah um but it's not a bad thing and that's the other thing is talking about race is endlessly interesting and what's really interesting about it is when uh all ideas of what you know are thrown out the window which is why i love discussions on racially ambiguous i love discussions on biracial i love all this shit because this shit is hilarious (laughs) (laughs) so we should probably backtrack and say that the um the topic of racially ambiguous came up last night in the live uh in reference to the Super Bowl and that redheaded gentleman who somebody commentated on him being racially ambiguous, which... Yeah, she said commentated. Yes. Let's just conversate. So, um, (laughs) (laughs) how it came up in the live was during the Super Bowl, a black woman said 
that she thought Travis Kelsey, a blue-eyed, red-haired white man, (laughs) was racially ambiguous. And this sent Twitter um, into a a tizzy, Mm -hmm. which we love. Twitter is if you want to just get 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 a get the pulse on like how people black and white and you know mixed race people themselves feel about this conversation and how how it can go from all fun and games to bitch I will fucking cut you you don't get to decide my identity like <laughs> and it can change really quick yeah which is which is what makes it so entertaining um all you need to do is just search biracial on Twitter and it's entertainment for hours um (laughs) so she said that and everyone decided that she was wrong because she was wrong um if you look at the pictures of this man he just looks like a really you know cool interesting smart funny white guy who has a sense of style and happens to have you know a black girlfriend or many black friends as we see he plays in the nfl which is dominated right. by last i checked black folks yeah and he's he's yeah he's super handsome but there's absolutely nothing just looking at him that you would be like he's anything but white right and so i think for her i think for for anybody to want to put racially ambiguous on on him like label him as such is like it's okay if you find a white guy attractive black woman it's completely okay <laughs> we don't have to make him any more special than he is we don't have to assign other tags to him we don't have to imagine that he has you know a mom named wanda like this is not <laughs> he's just a, first of all he's just a white guy named travis as in trit travis <laughs> hey now there's travis scott <laughs> Eh, well, if you want to talk about inner beings. Okay. Um, <laughs> so um, that's where this conversation came about. And so people in the chat, and as you noticed, we started talking about racially ambiguous and the chat got really lively because uh-huh. it is a fascinating topic. And it's fascinating to talking about um, race and racial identity with other black people. It's fascinating talking about race and racial identity with other mixed race people. But for some reason, when you try to talk about it with white people, you kind of have to like, you know, prepare the safe. Because I think that white people feel like there are wrong answers. And I want you to know this is a safe space. There are no wrong answers here. This is just a fun little quiz, which you know, we'll explore how you've never had to think about this shit. Yeah. Okay. Um, I've only ever had to think about it once when I was in junior high because my Spanish teacher, I don't even remember why. Maybe like because Mariah Carey was like coming to the height of her career. But she made some comment about how mixed race people are the most beautiful people And I remember in that moment feeling very sad that I was not mixed race and that I would never be as beautiful (laughs) as someone (laughs) who is mixed race. And I I mean, that was like in seventh grade. That has stuck with me for my entire life. So just know that a piece of me inside is very sad that I am just white. (laughs) And... That just goes to show you the power of being um, delegated racially ambiguous. Like, Travis Kelsey loves it when we say that, I'm sure. Justin Beck loves it. I don't care what nobody say. <laughs> Justin Beck it will be the first person to be like, I'm Jewish. I'm ethnically Jewish. I'm a Jewish person from Long Island. Like, Justin Beck does not prefer to be called white. Yeah. And for the purposes of this podcast and me being able to walk into my house on Saturday and have a good day, we are not going to call him white. (laughs) However, because it is such an excellent example Mm -hmm. of the true definition of racially ambiguous, we are going to say, if, you know, a loaded gun to my head and you had to say, is Justin Beck white? 
if you say he's not white, I am killing you. Listen, I'm going to say he's white. <laughs> <laughs> I 23 and me said he was white. <laughs> okay. Well, you said it. So, um, <laughs> um, you know, Jeff Beck is white. Burnett Beck is white. Phyllis Beck is white. So that would make Justin Beck white. But, you know, <laughs> presentation wise and how he speaks fluent Indonesian and how he speaks fluent Spanish and how he has, you know, an impeccable fade and his whole entire um, personal presentation and uh, body language would tell you something else. Yeah. And that's OK. And so. Yeah. We've established racially ambiguous. So I think the best examples, the best real time examples for you um, going into this game are you know and have met Justin Beck on, you know, a somewhat personal level. If you met him not knowing anything about him, you would not think that he was a white person. No. And you know what? And I think his looks have changed because when I see like pictures of him younger, he definitely looks different than he does now. And so I think he presented more white as a younger guy than he does now, too. Oh, his childhood photos, it's a white child. I yeah. Mean, he should have been a white child in an Oscar Mayer commercial. He was a white child. <laughs> um, and apparently, if anybody was following along in our private Facebook community, uh, my own niece, it'd be your own family. It'd be your own family. Um, <laughs> my own niece felt like 20 years ago, I looked... Uh, more black than I do now, um, which is interesting because all of my life, literally no one ever guesses black, ever. Really? Ever. La, let me ask you, as a mixed race person, do you, do you find or have you heard from other people um, that you... Do you ever find that you identify more with one side than the other? Or do you feel like evenly split? Or does it shift and change with where you are in life? That's another thing. So I forget who or where, but, you know, early on in a biracial child's life, if, 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 if they're looking for answers, you know, there's this thing on the Internet called biracial whatever, Constitution, Bill of Rights, biracial rights, whatever the fuck it is. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's it's telling the beautiful biracial butterflies that they, you know, don't have to choose a side and they can represent everything they are and be nothing at all. And it could change day <laughs> to day. It could change with the wind. Today you could be black and tomorrow you could be white. And that's OK, beautiful biracial butterfly. <laughs> um, it was a whole movement to, you know, make biracial identity uh, a more comfortable conversation for people who were struggling. The mm -hmm. thing about the quote unquote struggle, I think, is it really doesn't, um, it's all external. Yeah. So when they say a biracial person has a choice, you do. You can go this way or you can go that way. And we see it happening, you know, in, in, in families where one mm -hmm. kid, you know, just seems more black than the other or one kid is more interested in white but then you have to start asking whole other questions what is black what is white what is liking black things what is liking yeah. white things is black a monolith monolith no it's not i could like you know hardcore music and be a black person so like yeah. it, it starts going into these other areas of what am i allowed to like what am i allowed to do what should i do what do you accept from me if i don't do and it's like all of that shit doesn't fucking matter yeah. Because at the end of the day, you're the person living in your body and how the outside world perceives me is not my problem. Yeah. And it took me a minute to get to that. And I think that for all biracial people, you have really until freshman year of college to get that through your fucking thick skull. Because um, <laughs> <laughs> everybody's tired of the tragic mulatto conversation. <laughs> I, just, you know, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't fit in here and I didn't fit in there. Okay. There's so much internet. There's Google, honey, girl. And there's so much you could do and be and see and go that none of that shit should matter. Yeah. Um, but the shaping of that conversation early on 20 years ago was where do bira biracial people stand and what, what should we expect of them? And, you know, 
now the representation and the visibility is so high it's like who gives a fuck yeah (laughs) but it's still very fun to watch white people discover who's black and who's not (laughs) so um (laughs) i think the first thing we have to do is set the foundation so are you aware of the one drop rule no okay one drop rule was set up you know by white people a uh, long ass time ago, we're talking about you know Fred, Fred uh, Frederick Douglass times. Um, oh, are you th- saying like one drop of blood automatically makes you right? So they needed a way to yeah. identify and classify mixed race people. So if you mm-hmm. had one drop of black blood, you were automatically deemed black. Didn't matter if you presented white. Didn't matter if you presented biracial. You were black so that you could be labeled, you know, second class citizen. So it is a policy rooted in racism Uh, that white people invented. So (laughs) (laughs) but but it is also it, it has a very strong hold in discussions among black people on who gets to be and who does not. So the thing is now, everybody, not everybody, but everybody claims they don't like the one drop rule, but then, you know, let Justin Beck get a drop, and he's like, yep, told y'all, bitch, I'm in, I'm in. (laughs) (laughs) You see what I'm saying? Like, if you had a drop, you'd be like, I got a drop, though. Yeah, I Um, I mean, I bet Hilaria Baldwin wishes she had a drop of Spanish blood because that would have solved her whole problem. She has zero drops. So, (laughs) (laughs) so, um, yeah. And so you see, uh, this desire for spiciness, even though everybody is mad about this rule, but the rule has kind of stuck. And so in these conversations, it's just a funny thing. So, uh, so are there some one droppers in this, in this, there are so many one droppers. And Got now it. we're going to play the game. So hopefully your phone is charged because it we're going to start getting some messages. And okay. I'm going to tell you, and I did, I, the, I, we're playing the game this way where I send you the photo and you decide to guess their es- ethnicity um, because if you Googled, a lot of the searches that would come up would be, is such and such black, is such and such yeah. mixed. So that would, give, that would give it away. Okay, so this game is called... Amanda's problematic racial profiling. <laughs> no, see, uh, okay, okay, okay. Now we need to get back to the analogy. So, like, I could sense <laughs> on the live, everybody's like, oh, yeah, definitely play this game, y'all. <laughs> I mean, this feels like AAVE with just higher stakes because we're oh, looking you're at like, actual you're people. You're in the hot, bitch. <laughs> you are dripping sweat, Jordan Peele gif. Um... <laughs> I'm okay. I can take it. Just nobody get mad at me. But see, nobody should get nobody should get mad at you because the other thing is, a lot of these names. There are there are black people that are listening that they're gonna know the answers because mm-hmm. they've already had these conversations and won arguments with other black people or other white people. And been <laughs> like, bitch, I'm telling you that motherfucker's black. So. <laughs> You've just never played this game because when you walk around, you know, you see a brown person, you're not sitting there going, hmm, is she Indonesian? Is she? You're just like, anyway, you're, you go on about your white life. Yeah. <laughs> but we black and brown folks be like, uh-uh, something going on over there, something going on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just having sad feelings that I'm, once again, So, um, I'm going to text you a photo. Okay. And we're going to start easy. Okay? We're going to start easy. Okay. Uh, let's start easy. And and oh, okay. Well, I know he's not just white, so I'm looking at the rock, Dwayne okay, Johnson. Hold on, she said she's looking at the rock. Hold on, repeat yourself. She's looking at the rock, <laughs> and she knows he's not just white. We are looking at a photo right now that I have shared, and we will put these in the story so you can follow along. With, and, and and trust me when I say the photos have been carefully selected. <laughs> we are looking at a photo at The Rock. Okay. So I think, isn't he, 
Isn't he half white, half Hawaiian? And what about him makes you believe that he's half white? Well, because he's lighter skinned, he his like features aren't like too far in one direction. So like he has a wider nose, but like his lips are kind of like nice and full, but they're not like super full. And his eyes are like a lighter brown, it looks like in this picture. So he has like some traits that might be associated with um white people but also like he's like brown like he's bronzed and he has like tattoos that are indicative of like being associated with um some kind of like indigenous peoples okay okay and when he had hair his hair had like texture to it and i know white people can have like textured hair but he did have curly hair so there's like something giving him that flavor Okay. Um, these are good reasonings. These are all good deductions. Uh, I think that a lot of the assumption that he is white comes from his meteoric... Uh, fantastic A-list status because mm-hmm. you know who ha, ha, there's got to be something in there that's that's driving this thing. Like the Rock is universally accepted, loved. known, loved as a um, yeah, he's a fucking American icon. Yeah, and so you know everybody wants to be like. You know, he's like, he's like the Obama of celebrities that, you know, because a lot of people like, let's say I think Obama is just black. Yeah. Okay. Obviously, Obama is half black, half white. And people love to be like, well, actually, he's biracial. Bitch, Obama is black, but okay. <laughs> That's nothing. You're not allowed to say that, but I can say that. Obama is black. <laughs> um, but The Rock is black and Samoan. Really? Okay. So I was like. In the general vicinity-ish, like I was on the right side of the country. <laughs> um, I think a lot of his uh, ambiguity, because I do think that he is truly racially ambiguous. Yeah. Because I would just say the motherfucker Samoan. Yeah. Um, is that he has like this Canadian niceness. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so he feels whitish. <laughs> yeah. I, I think that's a, that's a good assessment. Okay. And the other thing here, too, everyone, you should also know that I'm not an expert either. You know, The Rock could call into the show and be like, actually, my dad is a quarter white. Good, good, good. That don't matter, <laughs> motherfucker. You black and some other. Um, <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I, I in, in true fashion, it's not like you're going to find a picture of, like, The Rock, you know, uh, Sandwich Barack between Obama his biracial. Yeah, where okay. it's that simple. He's literally a Canadian Black Samoan guy. <laughs> so okay, that was good. That was good. Okay, that was good. Um, but also the beauty of of The Rock is that a- any of us who are mixed race, we all claim his ass. Ain't nobody in this house Samoan, but when he come on the TV, we'd be like, "Yup, <laughs> there you go. There's our people." And this is like you're not even. Some, it don't matter. That's my, that motherfucker's on our team. And the, <laughs> and the, the other thing about um, the other thing about him is uh, I can't even remember what I was going to say. But you get it. Yeah. Okay. Let's pull up the next photo. That was good. And you had a lot of you had a lot of deductive reasonings of why you thought this. <laughs> so that was good. Maybe like um, maybe his. Um... His Moana character is what led me into that Hawaiian piece of 100%. It. Yeah. Um, and Moana, the first time I saw the baby Moana, yeah, I saw the texture of the young girl Moana's hair. You know, like how they managed to make this, like, that was my hair. Yeah. So, 
like on the days where I'm like, you know, I take my biracial constitution out and I can decide who I want to be. I'm like, bitch, I'm Moana today. I am. <laughs> I am the ocean. Okay. I <laughs> <laughs> I have the heart of Tafiti. Um. Okay. Up next. Okay. We have Jordan Peele. Oh no! See, I thought he was black. Black. He's mixed. Jordan Peele has a white mother. I was gonna say, is his mom white? But you did not think that. Upon glancing at, looking at him, you said that yeah. this was a black man. Yes. P- prop capital B blickety black black. Blickety black. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it just goes to show you how fascinating genetics so this are is- truly fascinating. I mean. This is like one of those documentaries about the deep, the deep sea, <laughs> where they take cameras to places that you've they that, that they've just never you've never seen this combination of fish before. You've never seen these colors. You've never seen this dwelling. You've never seen anything like this. You cannot believe. And you're just like science, man. How they get down there? That's what talking about racial identity is for me. I'd be like, wow, okay. Yeah. Well, I saw some twins recently on Instagram, and one is light-skinned, red hair, but she has, like, super curly hair, and her twin, and so this one presents white, but her twin presents black. It's crazy. Like, twins. And that happens all the time. Happens all the time. And the white one, pretty sure, gets told every day, no, you're not. And they're like, but here he is. Here's my dad. I'm telling you that right now. You don't get to tell me that I'm not. (laughs) So that's what happens. <laughs> okay, so now we can't talk about Jordan uh, Peele without talking about Keegan Michael Key. Okay, now see, I would automatically assume that he was biracial just because his skin is lighter, and I know that has no bearing, you know, on it. But given his coloring, and he has like yellow undertones in his skin, I'm going to say he has some like Eastern influences in here. Like uh, Indian or this like, motherfucker said Indian. And she like I think he's a direct descendant of Gandhi. I mean the way his head is shaped. <laughs> uh. There's there's like some kind of like Asian like he's he's definitely black, but there's some kind of like Asian influence in here as well. Yeah. Um, Keegan Mike Keegan Michael Key Keegan Michael Key is Barack Obama biracial. Okay. But you see your deductive reasoning. I understand it. He had he's regular black dad white mom. Wow. Okay. Um oh, the other thing I wanted to bring up about The Rock and and I wanted to bring this up because it's it's um it's something that you could understand is when the the Rock walks into a room before he's The Rock, pre-fame. Yeah. He's Dwayne Johnson. That's a black motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> so when we hear about Andre uh, Gordon, yeah. we're like, that's a black motherfucker. But it's not. Yeah. It's a half white, half Filipino <laughs> baby. You see right. what I'm saying? Where these things. <laughs> yeah. Oh, for sure. For sure. The nuances come from the names. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. I also, game, if, 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 if anywhere throughout the recording of this episode, you guys are hearing it and you're like, actually, Melissa, that person is gay, 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 gay. You can put it in the fucking comments. That's fine. We ain't going to put the record. <laughs> but yes, th- this, this will be flawed. But this is just, you know, biracial bingo. Okay. We having a good time. <laughs> Not biracial bingo. All right. Uh, the next one I have for you. And I just, I just want, I just want to keep you on your toes. Okay. Uh oh. Don't be scared. Don't be scared. Get a drink. I just want to keep <laughs> you on your toes. Harry Styles. Shut the fuck up. Harry Styles. First of all, lately I've been having feelings for Harry Styles, and I'm not sure why. And it feels really inappropriate because I think that he's very young. So let's just get that out of the way. I do love this cross dressing. I don't know why, but I love it. It's fantastic. Now, His personal style is through the roof. Ah, oh, and I'm fucking mad that he's dating what's-her-face. But that's neither here nor there. Okay, so he's biracial? 
Or is this just well, like what's a wild... your what's your final what's your what's your you can't call a friend you you, know, you have no lifelines what's your final answer? See, he just looks white to me, but because we're playing this game, I know that can't be the answer. Ugh. Just study his face. What's your final answer? Is he? Does he have an Asian parent? He's he's half white, half Asian. Like um. Hmm, maybe he has a a, a Korean Okay, parent. Amanda, I'm going to put you out of your misery. This That's a white motherfucker. This is part of the game. Okay, that's a regular <laughs> white motherfucker. <laughs> Fuck you. That's not fair. <laughs> I said I'm just keeping you on your toes. And you were like, what here. the I'm fuck? I'm like, well, is- <laughs> his eyes are kind of almond shaped. Maybe he has some. Fuck you. He's white. God damn it. <laughs> It's One Direction, motherfucker. Is that what he's from, One Direction? Yeah, you were like, hold on, get out of here. And yeah, no, that's, that's a regular white. It's a regular white. You're on the right path. <laughs> oh, God. I should have stuck with my gut instinct. <laughs> okay. Childhood staple, Vanna White. Step right up. Last Vanna name, White. White. Vanna White. I had a... I had a um, keyboarding teacher in the 90s whose last name was White, and she was black. So I'm going to, I'm just going to say based off of that, this woman has to be part black if you're calling out the last <laughs> name, and that's my childhood experience. <laughs> Vanna White is Puerto Rican and white. Okay. Puerto and Rican remember rock. last episode where I was talking about my friend Denise? Yeah. This is the vibe, but with dark curly hair. <gasps> okay. Wow. You see? So now, now in big in that picture, and imagine Vanna White with dark curls. You could see it. Hold on, I'm clicking. In bigging. Yep. It's the blonde hair. I think that that's a hard. But she okay, has brown so eyes. since we're on the topic of blonde hair, I'm going to give you the next one. Okay. Zach Morris. He's white. Final answer? Yes. Zach Morris is half Indonesian, half white. Shut up. Mom is a dead ass Asian lady for real. No way. Yes. Mark he Paul like, Gosler is half Asian bitch. He is like Aryan Nation, blonde hair, blue eyes. Wow. You're blowing my whole mind up right now. <laughs> <laughs> Look, no I just sent you a picture of his mama. Mm. No way. Yes, his mama is Asian. <gasps> what? Mm-hmm. She has receipts. Wow. Okay. Up next. We have. Oh. Did you this know a- this already or did you have to find these? Girl, I just remember what. Okay, so let's let me give you an analogy. So when you started your interest in uh, fitness, general fitness, health, nutrition, all of that. Yeah. You had a natural thirst for knowledge. Mm -hmm. So if you were to sit down with me and be like, Melissa, let's play name that exercise. (laughs) And you started being like, (laughs) on this one, you have to jump up and down and then sort of, you know, throw your hands to the ground and and then you're going to come back up and do this and that. And I'd be like, is that a burpee? You'd be like, no, dumbass. That's a fucking jumping jack. (laughs) the fuck a burpee where'd you get that from so like the the 20 years of accumulation of fitness knowledge is just on the tip of your tongue it's just like you know it's just crackling right there at the top of your brain it's just (laughs) comes natural to you right so because i am a person who is racially ambiguous and have heard every combination of you know after i've been asked what are you it's just something i'm interested in so i actually for all the time and in, I seek this information out and so I just know these things. Wow, Mark Paul Gosler. This is fascinating, this is, huh? And you know what? When I see him next to his mom, you can see the resemblance. Like yes. they have the same nose. Their eyes, like her eyes are a little bit more round, but like if you look at them from the nose down, yes, they're related because they have the same chin. Dang. Okay. It's crazy, right? It is crazy. Okay, so the next person we are going to give you Mm. 
is housey. Oh. Oh. See, she again. She looks just white to me, but for the purposes of this, now now you've got me fucked up because now I'm like, is this another Harry Styles? <laughs> um, is her real name Halsey? Her real name is Ashley. Okay, she's white. Psh, Ashley. Final answer. <sighs> yes. Halsey's father is black. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Wait, is that her on the bottom? That's her family. Mm-hmm. That's her daddy and her mama. Wow. And just for fun, Zs, I have saved a photo of Halsey in cornrows to see if you see it now. <laughs> <laughs> And Girl. maybe, well, no, because I was going to say maybe she had dark hair, but like she has in this childhood picture. But I still think, I mean, she's so fair. She has such a tiny. See, now she looks like she's going to get into trouble. Exactly. Exactly. See? Okay. Amanda, you're on the right track. I'm the... <laughs> you just got some bonus, bonus points. So when you see Halsey, when you see a person like Halsey in braids. Mm-hmm. Suddenly, the, 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 your, your on-the-right-side-of-history white instinct goes, ooh, I don't know if she's allowed to do that. Uh. Yeah. Because, <laughs> I mean, and I know, like, you can't, like, every, everybody has different, like, features. But if you're going, like, characteristically, like, her dad characteris- characteristically, like, if you, if you lightened his skin, you would still think he looked like a black man. Correct. Her mom looks like she... Her mom looks like she might be, like, Puerto Rican or Latina based off of that picture. Like, her mom doesn't look straight white. So she's kind of racially ambiguous, I would say. Halsey looks very white because she has a Halsey, very narrow nose. Halsey looks white. So here's the thing about Halsey. Um, I, I don't know how she identifies, but Halsey is very, um, you know, open about the fact that she is half black and half white and she you know makes it clear i'm half black and half white so i think some time ago on twitter she got in trouble she's like i cannot believe that all these hotels just you know give everybody these shampoos you know like not everybody can wash their hair with these shampoos who decided that uh these are the shampoos you could use and everybody's like that's the shampoo you could use though white girl what are you saying (laughs) (laughs) and you know she faced some ire because that is not, you know, an issue that anybody thought that she could take up because of the way that she presents. Yeah. Now, we don't know what the texture of her natural hair is. We, I've never seen it. She just looks like she has white girl wash and wear hair. Yeah. Um, which which uh, leads me to my next thing. I have always loved this hairstyle. I love the braids. I think they're so pretty. I got it one time, and I felt like I was going to run, as Amanda would say. It looks like she's going to run into some trouble there. <laughs> um, <laughs> I felt like, even though, you know, anybody that has listened to me at all, even in passing, like, you know, I'm literally standing at the top of the Empire State Building. Believe that I'm black, please. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I'd have every right to put those fucking braids in my hair. Yeah. But for some reason, I did it and it felt, um, first of all, I felt like I was wearing a snake hat. I look crazy as fuck. <laughs> um, <laughs> Justin Beck loved it, was so upset that I took him out before he got home. He was on tour yeah. and I got him. Just I wanted to play around. Yeah. But I felt so. (sighs) Did you feel like you were wearing a costume? And I felt like. I don't even. I can't even say that string of words. But. But I felt like. Somebody else would think I was wearing a costume. And then their perception of me wearing a costume was where I was getting upset. Yeah. Yeah. But I, that you know, makes where, sense. where it would be like, I have to explain why I can do this. Yeah. And I didn't want to have to do that. Although I love the hair. I think it's gorgeous and I want it so bad. I've even sought oh. out. <laughs> I've sought oh out God. people that do it on Latina girls. Like, 
because there's a texture of your hair. There's a way to do it on this kind of hair. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Halsey did it. And you see that that immediate feeling that you got. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh can. no, you're, you're going to get in trouble. <laughs> okay, ooh, okay, okay. This is a fun game. Here we go. Okay. Boom. The next category is Slash. Okay. So in this picture, he ha- he's wearing sunglasses, um, but he has... He has um, very curly hair. It's black. He has a... He's kind of giving me, like, Lenny Kravitz vibes here. Okay. Um, so I'm going to say... But I feel like, gosh, every time I think that these are so straightforward, I'm wrong. <laughs> because, because he's giving me Lenny Kravitz vibes, I would say half black, half white. However, I feel like there's a wild card in here and he's got some kind of something else. So maybe he is... Maybe he's half black, half Asian. Slash is half black, half white. Ah! Um, I think the the fascinating part about Slash is because of the genre of music that he's involved in and the right. iconic level. Of, nobody, nobody doesn't know who Slash is. You right. see the hat, it's you like, see the hair, you see the cigarette. You're like, yeah. oh, that's the fucking bomb ass dude from fucking Guns N' Roses. But for some reason, automatically kind of on um, autopilot, you just assume that's a fucking curly haired white dude. Well, because when you look at like that, um, when you look at rock music from the 80s and 90s and you're looking like specifically at, I don't, I don't think they would be like considered glam rock, but they have like a touch of that, right? And the, the pants, the, the shiny leggings and shit that they wear um, and the jewelry, like that feels like a very white, like a very white man thing because that genre of music was by and large dominated by white men. Even though it was invented by black people. Correct. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but yeah, Slash is regular black and white. Good Fascinating, man. right? Yeah. Okay, so since we're on that, you know, we're, we're on that track. We're going to have a little fun now. This is going to be somebody that you could recognize given uh, Chris's a love for this kind of music. Where'd my, where'd my guy go? And what I really love, too, is how this game forces you to reevaluate, you know, really what you thought about how this person presents. So imagine if you're like, your mind's getting blown, the person living in that body. (laughs) (laughs) Here we go. Next up is Pete Wentz. Peter Wentz. Oh, he came up the other night. Um... Pete Wentz. Pete. Oh, God. Is this, he's he was Fall Out Boy, right? Yep. Emo as fuck. God. Um, Pete Wentz. Wait, was he on your Filipino excellence <laughs> Instagram? I think he's don't, half don't, white, Don't half try Filipino. to give Pete Wentz to us. No, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Jap- half Japanese, half white. Wow. She just took it a whole level. She said half Japanese. Um, I'm going to send you another picture just so that. Oh, no. Okay. Is he half black? Pete's mom is black. Pete's daddy See? is white. He's given me like, and maybe that's just the way that he's like, I don't know. I'm getting like Japanese his, fashion kid vibes. Well, his presentation, you know, he had eyeliner and you know, he fried his shit with a oh fucking flat God. Because his hair God was I... not doing that naturally. He, what what he's doing to his, that motherfucker definitely has a keloid scar on his neck somewhere from the fucking <laughs> hot plate. Just like Meghan Markle does because you got to fry that shit. Um... 
Now do you see that he's half black and half white? With Holy the shit! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Damn! No wonder so just he so put you guys hair, understand, his hairline is bad. Just so you understand, I just sent a picture of Pete Wentz with his natural hair to Amanda, and she can see wow. clearly now. The rain is gone. Um. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Mm-hmm. Fascinating, right? That's crazy. Okay, this is one that uh, shouldn't stump you, but might. Um, everybody knows her. Let's find my picture. There we go. Rashida Jones. Oh, oh, oh. Um, she's half black, half white. But would you have known, like, how do you know this? Because she's extremely famous. Because she's extremely famous. And I was surprised to hear that her dad was Quincy Jones. I thought when I first saw her, she gives me like, she gives me like, I have an Indian parent vibe or I have like a Latina mom or Latino dad. Like she, she doesn't present black. Sometimes she does. But even in that show, um, what was that Netflix show that was problematic? Or she um, like she presents very black in that show. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I do know what you're talking about. It made by the guy who made Blackish. Yes, in Parks okay. and Rec, she presented white. In that show, she presented black, and it felt off for me because that's not how she typically portrays herself in the roles that she plays on TV and in movies. Right, because for the most part, we don't see Rashida Jones code switch ever. Yeah, right. We just see her being, you know, the nice white lady in the office or the nice white love interest. So we're not allowed to feel uncomfortable with her presentation as black, black. But we're like, oh, that's a thing. And I imagine that some people probably feel that way about me because of the way that I look. And when I get to switch and it's like, hold on, what the fuck? Yeah. But you have to know me for a long time and you just have to get over it. So, okay. (laughs) Um, (laughs) I'm not going to tell you this person's name. I'm just going to send the picture. You're going to tell me your answer and then I will tell you her name. Oh, God. Is it a famous person? Yes, kind of. Um, she's very pretty. Gorgeous. Okay, so she's a blonde lady, but she's not true blonde because she's got some dark roots. So I'm going to imagine that at some point she was brunette um, because she also has dark, dark eyebrows and dark eyes. She's a very symmetrical face. Um, I think that this person, I, I would say she is, she looks Latina, actually. That is Kenya Kinski Jones. That's Rashida Jones' sister. She is half black, Shut half white. Up. They're sisters? That is her little sister who is a model. Dang. Let me show you another picture of her. I bet Rashida is upset that she... <laughs> That's the same person? That is the same person with dark hair. Fuck. Chameleons in this motherfucker. I know. Wow. Now, what do you think about this woman here? She looks like Rosie Perez. Is that Rosie Perez? That's not Rosie Perez, but, but what would you think? What's the ethnicity of this person? She's Latina. With like this is Rashida Jones' sister Kidada. <laughs> <laughs> they are the three women I just showed you are sisters. Fuck me! Wow, they're all gorgeous. See, this is the thing. <laughs> Fuck, they're all beautiful. Everybody in this thing is beautiful, which is upsetting. Listen, you can't have it all, White. Can't have it all. <laughs> uh- <laughs> That's crazy. I mean, they look. I, this last one, what's her name again? Kadada. Kadada. Famously she... Tupac's girlfriend. Oh, okay. Um, she and Rashida, I think, resemble each other. They have some similarities, like their eyes are similar. And Oh, Kenya has a different mom, but still. Yeah. So the middle one, I don't think looks like either of the other two. 
but right she has a different mom she's the youngest got it okay okay this is a great game moving right along mm-hmm. our favorite tracy ellis ross oh well she's half black half white correct um we're gonna do you one better we're gonna go not just half black half white half black <clears throat> half Royal jewish oh, okay so Sometimes you get that little Jewish flavor in there and it takes things to another level, a.k.a. Justin Beck. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, this woman here, I'm not going to tell you her name, but who do you, what, what do you think about this woman here? Well, she, she looks a lot like Tracy. She does. Are they, is she a sister? I mean, their faces are almost identical except for the fact that in this picture of Tracy, she has a beautiful head of curls, giant curls, and this woman's hair is straight and pulled back. But, I mean, they have the same nose. Is it the mm-hmm. same person? Who, what ethnicity is this person that I just sent you? And then I'll tell you who she is. Well, I, they look like they could be sisters. She's got to be half black, half white. They look like the same person. With this is a white hair. woman. No. This woman is not related to Tracy Ellis Ross. This is Nick Kroll's sister, Vanessa. Shut up. That's a regular white lady. But, wait, isn't Nick Kroll Jewish? Yes. A so Jewish white maybe... man. This is his sister. Or maybe somebody lying in their family because she be looking like <laughs> Tracy Ellis Ross. <laughs> oh, my God. I mean, if you just Photoshop that hair onto her, I would think mm-hmm. it was the same person. Now, look, that's a picture of Vanessa Kroll. Um looking just like so if i'm vanessa kroll mm-hmm. billionaire vanessa kroll you know he comes from money lots of yes it. yes um if i'm vanessa kroll i am buying an afro wig and wearing that shit every day and telling you bitch diana ross is my fucking aunt <laughs> <laughs> uh, all i do is lie about my blackness okay if i'm vanessa kroll but vanessa kroll does not lie she just, you know, she's a regular nice white Jewish lady. There she wow. is. Wow. Mind blown. Yeah, because now she looks totally different. Yeah, now she just, you know, she looks like the, uh, you know, the 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 head administrator at the JCC. It's like a nice. <laughs> <laughs> it's. I'm telling you what, genetics is amazing. Yeah. Well, and okay. her skin tone is different in the first one, too. Like, it looks like she's either been on vacation or applied some self-tanner. And she's very, she has very pink undertones in the second picture, which I think makes a difference. Okay, so since we're on the, the, the Tracy Ellis Ross wave, we're giving you Yara Shahidi, the beautiful Yara Shahidi. She's gorgeous. Fucking um, gorgeous. What about that lip shape? Who are you? Like, you, you're just going to get I that mean, hair and those lips? Okay, cool. Uh, yeah. I got nothing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say she is. <sighs> okay, let me ask you this question: Are any of these people like Harry Styles, black, black, or are they all? They're all biracial. Um, you just need to play the game. Don't worry about how the game is made. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I I will say she's black, black, but I'm sure that that's wrong. She is half black, half Iranian. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's a good Fascinating. mix. All right, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna um, switch gears here. Okay. We're gonna give you Carmelo Anthony on the pig on the on the on the on the uh, tails of your previous question. Is anybody in this category? Yes, black, black, Carmelo Anthony. Well, his name is Carmelo, so there's got to be some kind of, like, Italian, like, nobody just names their kid Carmelo. He's black and white. Uh, is that your final answer? That's my final answer. Um, Carmelo Anthony is Puerto Rican and black. Okay. I mean, but I was if you were asking me, some I would just Italian. say that's black, black, and just somebody's black daddy was just like, I'm gonna go with Carmelo. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I would have thought. 
maybe if his first name was Anthony, I would have been like, oh. but see, even Anthony is like an Italian name or like a, like a Latin derived. Okay. Okay. Now I have given you a photo of Shay Mitchell. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, she's so pretty. Um, I, why do I feel like, is she black and Asian or is she black and white? She's giving me like some black strong. Black and yellow, black and yellow, black and yellow, black and yellow. <laughs> some what strong <laughs> Asian vibes. I think she's, I think her mom's Asian and her dad's black. Her mom's a, her mom's Filipino specifically and her dad is white. White? White. Damn. She doesn't look Filipino. That's Filipino motherfucker right there. Filipino excellence. That's Filipino. I know. We're so proud She's to have her. so fucking pretty. Okay. She's fucking... <sighs> Kill me now. Love her. And she's, like, funny. Like, her Instagrams are truly funny. Like, I think that she's what Chrissy Teigen wishes she was. <laughs> Chrissy Teigen is also mixed race, but didn't make the game. So let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love him. He's he's Filipino excellence. I know this. Yes! <laughs> Darren Chris, give her the point, everybody. Bing, bing, bing. Amanda is on the board. <laughs> Darren Chris is half Filipino, half white. <laughs> <laughs> Darren is also a very Filipino name. Is it really? I mean, it just seems like because Filipinos love a double letter. Yeah. You know, like they just like to throw that <laughs> double letter in there. Mirabelle, LL. They'll just fuck it up and two, do two R's just because. <laughs> um <laughs> Uh, next up, famously ambiguous, half giving it away, Jessica Beals. Jennifer Beals, sorry. Oh, wait. That's L not word. the, um, I didn't watch that. What? Mm-mm. Wait a second. You mean to tell me that you have? That seems like something I would watch. Because I have it, too. Well, I hope I have it. Um, lesbian vibes and you didn't love L word like I was studying that shit like how can I come off like this no I didn't <laughs> watch it I it, it would make sense it's something that I probably should have watched but <laughs> yeah do you do you ever do, well now we're changing games here now the, the name of the game is is she a lesbian or not you don't ever <laughs> you don't ever get mistaken for a lesbian I always hope that I do but I don't um I don't know nobody's ever told me like a Meredith Baxter, Bernie, you don't sometimes go, maybe I'll be a late in life lesbian. I don't know. I mean, I maybe if presented with the option, I don't know. We've already had this conversation. Well, here's the thing, though. When you had the Tegan and Sarah conversation, I was like, maybe it's just in there and she doesn't know yet. Yeah, no. Because you have these random attractions that feel very not hetero. Even your Harry Styles one. Yeah, so I love, I love a lady that is kind of like ambiguous because I feel like Tegan and Sarah sometimes will be very feminine looking but mostly they're very ambiguous it's kind of like that David Bowie thing like yeah you like androgyny I do love that like that Chelsea lady on Instagram and TikTok there's something about that that's like very attractive that woman from first of all when I sent you that TikTok immediately I was like this Amanda likes this she's gonna like this she's gonna fucking devour this page because this lady has <laughs> strong, hardcore lesbian energy, but also lipsticky at yeah. times. Yeah. So I think it, I think it's just that like ambiguousness of it that I like, which is fascinating. Like, so I'm different. I'm 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 so curious in the fitness world how nobody is like, oh, she's a lesbian. Yeah, I don't know. Nobody's ever said anything to me about it. Maybe. Well, probably because you bring your 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 fitness husband. So <laughs> could be could could be. <laughs> um, okay, I mean, but I get hit on at the gym by men, so it must not be that strong. Even when my hair was short, but well, it also could be that I'm men are a white lady hounds. with a butt. Men are pussy hounds. It doesn't literally doesn't, doesn't girl. I, I I can look like a garden gnome. Hey girl. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's another game. Um, this woman is. This woman is, her right eye is so much smaller than her other one. Um, 
she she has a white person in there somewhere because her hair looks like white girl hair. Mm. She is half Puerto Rican, half white. She is Barack Obama, half black, half white. Shut up. Yes. Wow. I'm talking about regular black daddy, regular white mama. Yeah, she didn't get any of his blackness, like physically. But now I just those sent are you her parents. The, I just sent you the picture of the parents. She looks exactly like her father, who is black. Yes, she does. Damn. Oh my god. So it's why like I love her. As, I, why I love her as an example is because I love showing people pictures of Shorty. It's me. Yeah. But there will be times when we're FaceTiming recording this show, there will be times your face moves and it's Shalom and then it's your mom. It's very strange. Yeah, I'm a shapeshifter. I know. Yeah. It's horrible. That's crazy. It's, but it's, that's it, crazy. It, that's her fucking face. Yeah. Wow. It's horrible for trying to take pictures and trying to figure out your angles. I don't know which ones because <laughs> they keep shapeshifting shit. Um. <laughs> okay, this next image... I'm not going to tell you her name because... Oh, wait. Is she from Disney? No. Oh. Well, look. I mean, looking at her without, like, putting much thought into it, you would say she's black, but because we're playing this game, I know she's not. <laughs> um, I'm going to throw you a bone. Okay. Here's another, another angle. Oh, okay, okay. Well, she's black Mm -hmm. because she has edges and she has... Uh Uh-oh, Amanda says she says she has edges. Okay. Look at the context clues. Good job. Gorgeous hair. But she's also wearing, in this this photo, she is wearing a kimono. And I chose this picture specifically to stump your ass. Go ahead. An obi belt. Is that what that's called? I chose this picture specifically to stump your ass. So your answer is, you think she is black and... Asian. What Asian? What kind? Oh, I would what say brand? Um, this is feeling this is feeling Japanese. I know I keep saying Japanese, but this is feeling Japanese. Wrong. She's half black, half Filipino. What? That is her. She was the girl that just sang at the um, COVID Super Bowl. Okay. Wait, she's called her? Her name is her. Her stage name is H-E-R, her. Oh, okay. I don't know that I would have in this date and time pronouns. picked a fucking pronoun. <laughs> But now you got me her, her. Yeah, so like basically the sentences that Lennox and, and Shira say make sense. Her <laughs> likes. Um, <laughs> this would be the perfect person for them. Um, okay, let's switch gears here. Oh, Fred Armisen. Okay, okay. I know he's I know he's mixed, but what is he mixed with? I think he's half black, half white. But he yeah. looks like he looks like a regular old Jewish guy. Okay. Okay. Or maybe Middle Eastern. Hmm. He has light eyes. Think? He has dark hair. But he feels very Jewish to me. He is half Jewish, half black. I love this game. So you are saying that he's Lenny Kravitz, Zoe Kravitz, yeah. Lisa Bonet. Yep. This motherfucker is Korean white. He's what? He is German Korean. Wow. Fascinating, right? Yes. German Korean. Wow. Do you know what's so funny? My friend's husband is, see, Vietnamese. I always mix them up. He's either Vietnamese or he's Korean. And when they had their first child, he looked exactly like her husband. And she is white lady, pale skin. You know, auburn hair, and everybody always assumed that her son was adopted. She had the second child. He looks just like her. And so everybody assumed then that her eldest was the adopted child, and the second was her biological child. And then the third baby came out looking just like her husband again. It's crazy how the mix changes every single kid, but this is fascinating wow he just looks like a regular old jewish white guy 
Okay. So yeah, the, the eggs are in there percolating. The eggs are in there like, oh, let me get my flavor <laughs> crystals on. And then they travel down the tube and be like, what's it going to be? Yes. And the sperm gets in there. Like, I just want to know, my egg was just chilling in mercy. Like, girl, we don't even know what we're going to do with this one. <laughs> because... Um, for a long time, you know, because Marlene looks half black, half Filipino to me, or she looks Samoan. She looks some kind of, but like, you look at my sister and her daddy's black. Yeah. You don't know what the other part might be, but somebody yeah. black. Yep. Then I came and I was high yellow with pitch black straight hair. Yeah. And I looked like an immaculate conception in the arms of my, you know, <laughs> Asian mom. <laughs> um. And then, you know, you start morphing and then summertime comes and you be ripping and running outside. You get to the little tan, the curls come in. And according to my niece, Kira, I appeared more black um, uh -huh. in my younger days. And then somehow she thinks that I have, you know, glowed up into <laughs> a non-black person. Girl, she was lighting me up in that Facebook. Um, <laughs> if you haven't joined our, our Imperfect Strangers Facebook community, you can see very rarely and up for a short time only. Um... <laughs> my niece fucking me all the way up and telling Choosing me that violence. I am not black. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and then steal things, I'm going to send her some clothes. Girl, you, you, you don't embarrass me in public. Okay. Um, <laughs> next up, we have a rapper. Don't let that stump you. A rapper. Uh... We like his songs. He looks like Adam Duritz with that hair. Um, she said Adam. <laughs> I used, oh my God, I used to have the biggest crush on him. We are looking at a photo of J. Cole and Amanda has just called this motherfucker the Counting Crows. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> because his locks are like, they look just, okay, shut up. Um, well, he is definitely black in there somewhere. He is also... He's, he is half black, half white. He is a light-skinned black man. He's He's got a white mom. Correct. Correct. Ding, ding, ding. Ding, ding, ding. And not only, he's, he's, um, he's like true biracial working class, fucking somebody. He had a parent in the post office and a parent in the military. Like, he is half black, half white. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we're staying on this track of rappers because now Amanda's got, you know, what we call a little swagger in her step. She's like, I'm fucking killing this game. I've gotten almost <laughs> all of the answers wrong. <laughs> However, I'm having fun. Um, <laughs> I'm like, right, 50% of the time. Let's not get crazy. 50, we're going to say 50. <laughs> Who can relate? Woo! This is a rapper named Logic. He made a catchy song about suicide. Oh, yikes. Logic. Well, yeah, he looks like Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> Don't do that to him. He's cute. <laughs> oh, my God. That is so mean. His teeth and eyes... And, like, general goofy expression are giving me very heavy white vibes. But his hair is giving me texture. Um, he's also half black, half white. He is half black, half white. Yay! But, I mean... We're just going to... That was a good guess. He's goofy In looking. reality, you would go, this is a white person. And the, 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 the problem with logic. <laughs> <laughs> Let me give you his government name. His government name would have given it all the way away. Uh, Robert Bryson Hall, the third. Oh, that, that's <laughs> white. That's 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 a black man's child. Um, what? No. Bryson. Bryson is black as fuck. Meh. Um, that sounds like one of those hybrid names that people give their kids with like 15 extra letters. The issue with uh, logic is he uses the N-word. <gasps> and we don't like it. Oh, no. 
And that's the other thing is we don't, we can't say, we can't tell Halsey and Logic that they can't use the N word because mm-hmm. they can. They absolutely they can. They can, but. But that presentation got you fucked up. Maybe they need to wear a t-shirt with their dad's picture on it. Like, I don't say it. I yeah. don't say it. Because, you know, presenting the way that I do. Yeah. You could just run into some problems. Yeah. I want to say it. I like to say it in my head. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, and when I'm around black folks and we're black folksing. Yeah. And they're just, you know, cool with it. Yeah. I feel that tinge inside that goes, man, that was that. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, casual conversation with my dad. My dad says it like, um. Yeah. Uh, and I, I can't. And it sucks. But, and that's, the, and that's the thing. If you're listening to this right now, this is a great time for me to bring out this PSA. If you are a white person <laughs> and you are finding ways to justify why you are allowed to say it, you can't. Because even I can't, bitch. And Shorty oh, is my ew. dad. No. White people, no. You know, they'd Please. be trying so hard to figure out ways to say it. They cannot. Ew. Okay, well, I just, I just noticed the time. I have seven minutes to continue your game, I would love to just neglect my child and leave him in the car rider line. Um, you have so. no time. The game is over. But it was a very fun game. You got like three <laughs> right. Um, hey, hey, I got more than three right. I'm going to have to go back and tally right. this up. Um, but that just – and I had so many more. I had went with, with Miller to show you, but I showed you him last night. Yeah, I already know him. Um, I had uh, Amon Lestenberg. I don't know who that is. I had Jason Momoa. Oh, he, yeah, he's Hawaiian, right? Or Samoan. I got to Google it, but he ain't, he's white and something. He's white yeah. in one of those. I mean, Momoa, yeah. I had Vanessa Hudgens. Filipino excellence. Filipino excellence. <laughs> okay. Um, and then, you know, I was going to, I was going to end the game with Cardi and Hennessy. Fuck. Oh, uh, Dominican. She's Dominican. And black. They're Afro Latina. They're Afro Caribbean. They are black. And so and and people like to light Cardi up and say that she's not black. Cardi's black as fuck. Yeah. So yes. Okay. Great job. Um this has been an excellent game. Maybe next week you can play a game with me where you send me photos of white people and I try <laughs> to figure out their nationality. Just what kind of white? <laughs> I'll be like, that's that's German, um, that's German Russian, right? Like that would be a horrible game because that would there be would a be no fun. Horrible game. <laughs> that would be the worst game ever. We'll never play that. Actually, wait. What are you? I don't really know. Um, okay, she said I'm just white. Okay, I'm just white. <laughs> I started digging some stuff like into the ancestry. I won't submit my DNA to 23andMe because I don't want the government to have that information. They already have it. Um, (laughs) but um i i did some digging and everybody like i went back like a few different branches on the tree and everybody was still here um and i got bored and so i went into chris's because his is way more interesting um i know that there there was a um non-white person um we do have some native american uh, blood in our family tree um, well of course you do colonizer <laughs> right um, <laughs> um she was just like colonize the colonizer um <laughs> but uh but that's that's it's just very boring i think it's probably something like scottish i mean gordon is i think an irish last name so there's some kind of like Scot- irish shit happening in there somewhere Next week on our game of just white we'll see how exciting it is but um go <laughs> go go white walker go collect your time <laughs> <Not a> white <laughs> walker <laughs> this was fun see you later bye, bye. <laughs> all right well thank you for tuning in to this very special episode of guess who's black um, <laughs> we hope you had a lot of fun. I most certainly did, and I think that Amanda's whole mind has been illuminated. So.
So um, if you guys have any questions or comments or wish to make any corrections to any of the answers um, that you heard here in this game, please be sure to join us over there on Instagram and leave your comments and questions and whatever else um, down there in that comment box. Or you can join us on our Facebook community and strike up a whole conversation there because the fun never ends when you're talking about who's biracial. Um, Thank you, too, for listening to the um, podcast in general. That's really nice of you. We are so close to getting to our 40th episode. So we are rounding out the end of season two here shortly. So um, will there be a season three? You'll have to keep tuning in. We hope so. I hope you hope so. Um, And you can do that by making sure that our little show keeps growing by listening, liking, rating, and reviewing. You can hop on over to Apple Podcasts and leave a five-star review or a um, really nice, um, wait, that's what you got to do, five-star review. Do that, and then we'll look at it, and we'll post it on our Instagram and start bragging because we do like those. Um, But those reviews are helpful because they let other people know that you like the show and other people then go, hey, man, I think I like the show too now. So please do that. Uh, If you haven't done so yet, follow us on our Instagram. It's imperfectstrangers underscore podcast. And why the Instagram is important is because there you will find out, um, you know, when the new episodes drop, Friday at midnight. Um, You'll get episode summaries. You'll also get to indulge in our interactive story. And for this episode, the interactive story is really important because you can see the exact photos that I selected to play this uh, game with Amanda, so um, be sure to catch that. If you miss any of the interactive stories on our um, Instagram, they live forever in the highlights section, so be sure to check that out. Uh, If you haven't followed us yet on Twitter, you can do so uh, in Strangers. We also have a Patreon if you want more. If you want bonus episodes, newsletters, sneak peeks and merch and stuff like that you can join us over at patreon figure out which tier suits your life and budget best and join us there and um thanks thank you so much for listening i hope i hit everything um amanda says there's a new way to engage with us on instagram that makes it uh better and more important because they're always fucking with the algorithm so uh you can ask her about that but thank you so much for all your support follow us everywhere buy our merch listen to our stuff thank you goodbye